thyroid disease. There's a lot of information on the internet that really puts the thyroid as the sole cause of all the medical problems in society. And you have to be careful about what you read on the internet. There's a lot of good information, but there also is a lot of misleading information. My take on the thyroid is that it is a master gland that we know about. That means a gland that kind of controls other glands. And uh, it does age. As it ages, it doesn't function that great. So just like, for example, the ovaries in a woman that's going through menopause. If you know anybody that's going through menopause, which is a change of life or the change, at about 40 to 50 years of age, you'll know that that person, that woman, goes through hot flashes, irritability, mood swings, difficulty with sleep, vaginal dryness. All those are because the ovaries are piddling out. They're decreasing their function because they're kind of tired, I guess you could say. Well, I believe that the thyroid does the same thing. In fact, I've seen patients come in at the age of 60, no symptoms, no problems, but I would do a thyroid test in addition to other things, and I find their thyroid is just turned off. It's not working anymore. They're fine, but I just happen to find it, and it's good as a baseline. Same thing with those menopausal women. If you get something called an FSH or LH, you'll know that the, this, the, the blood test results will show menopause. Now, the question is, do I need those blood test results to diagnose menopause? In a woman that I just described, no, I, I don't. But it's nice to have a baseline test in case things get worse. In the case of a thyroid problem, if you have weight gain and, and you're exercising, weight gain, constipation, palpitations, uh, changes in emotional tolerance, uh, dry, brittle nails and hair, dry skin, the likelihood is very high, and you have a history in the family, the likelihood is very high that you might have a thyroid problem. It would be important to rule out other diseases as well. But if those things are there, and I have some abnormalities on feeling this thing called the thyroid, and the ultrasound is abnormal, it shows multiple cysts, then I would usually say there is probably a decreased, uh, there's a thyroid that's decreasing its function. The idea then would be what do you do with that? Well, the thyroid makes thyroid hormone to control the other glands in the body with building blocks of iodine. And the average American diet is lousy to begin with. And, let, and actually, the diets that are very restrictive are also lousy, are, are decreased, I should say, uh, on certain building blocks that you might need. Um, so it's important to consider iodine at first. This would be the first step. If the symptoms are mild and there's nothing else going on, then I usually would say, let's see what the diet's like. You might want to get an iodine test. That's a 24-hour urine test. Or there are some people who do skin testing for iodine. I don't think that test is accurate enough. I think at, le at the least uh, uh, the urine test is important to establish a baseline. Once you know iodine levels, then you supplement. It's usually in the form of kelp or iodine that's blended in a lab. But you do that for a while and you see, that's one or two months, and you see how the symptoms dissipate or don't change. If they don't change, it tr truly could mean that you are okay with your iodine, but you might have to get a little bit of hormone to stimulate this thing. There are iodine supplements uh, that come in the form of pig iodine, or desiccated thyroid hormone from a pig that you take by pill form. Some people don't mind uh, taking in anything that comes from a pig, and these are farm-raised, uh, either grain-fed pigs or grass-fed pigs. But uh, either way, if you have an allergy to a pig, then you might want to get the synthetic uh, thyroid medicine. Either way, sometimes a trial with thyroid medicine will show you that, yes, symptoms improve, so you probably need thyroid supplementation or symptoms don't improve and you either have to crank it up or you look for other sources or other causes of the symptoms. Because, as I mentioned, the thyroid is a master gland and it controls the other uh, systems in the body, the respiratory, the endocrine, the heart and cardiovascular, the hormone. Sometimes it'll be confusing because uh, you can have a person that comes in with multiple other symptoms, multiple other systems involved. And if that person is having a very bad presentation of all of the systems, then it might need workup with each 
specialty of each system. And uh, the specialty service, the specialty doctors that we have out there nowadays are great. They're great in their specialty, but they're usually somewhat impotent in the other specialties. And that's why it's nice to have an advocate, a primary care doctor who can be your advocate and kind of get all the information back and re-digest and come up with a plan about what to do with how severe your symptoms are. Uh, if you wait until the last minute, you'll have every blood test in the world positive, biopsy positive, ultrasound positive. It's an easy, it's an easy wash. Just get on medicines and you should be okay. If you're just beginning to have the symptoms, then your blood test might not be positive. Your ultrasound might not show cysts yet or changes in the tissue. So the question is, what is that specialist going to do? Is a specialist going to wait until you turn positive before treating you? Or is a specialist going to go ahead and treat you? And this is the dilemma that we'll find nowadays. If this is more of a, an OB-GYN problem, say menopause, we'll go back to menopause because it's easy to, for most people to relate to. Usually, if you find somebody that's a menopause, as long as there's no cancer, pap smears are normal, ultrasound is normal, the average doctor would put that person on estrogen to either postpone the menopausal symptoms of hot flashes, irritability, mood swings, vaginal dryness, or control when you go through menopause with uh, prescription medicines. And, and that's done at, at the beat of an eye, at the blink of an eye. So uh, without even thinking, I see that done all the time. I don't think it's out of the ordinary to consider if you're having the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction, usually hypo or underactive thyroid, and the, the blood tests or the signs are there but the blood tests haven't turned positive yet, I don't think it's out of the ordinary or too much to ask to try a thyroid supplementation. I would always do the iodine first, uh, supplements of iodine would be helpful, uh, changing diet, changing nutrition is very important working on relaxation. I think that bringing down the stress response is important. Not necessarily with withdrawing yourself from the stress, but working on developing the relaxation response. Counseling is usually the way I would say do it. And exercise and body weight control. Both of those go together. So it's important whenever you have any chronic disease to be healthy. It's important when you're just starting out with a new diagnosis to also consider changing your lifestyle so that you are healthy. Because if in the future for a couple of weeks you turn positive or a couple of years you turn positive, you don't want to wait until then to become healthy. It would, at the least, if you become healthy with thinking, eating, and activity, you'll be able to postpone when this thing turns positive. Kind of like the menopausal woman. If you take medicines, you can postpone menopause. But if you also get healthy, eat properly, you can also postpone the symptoms so they're not, they come on at a later date or they come on with low intensity. So those are things to consider. The other, I had a, a young 16-year-old that came in today, and usually the disease doesn't present that early. So I think it's important when you have a, a low-burning disease like thyroid, which I do believe she has, a uh, low-burning disease that also to control all the other problems that come up for your decade of age. So in a young person under the age of 20, there's a lot of uh, developmental challenges that occur. Uh, peer uh, relationships are being developed, a sense of autonomy is being developed, sense of self-worth is being found and sought for. So there's a lot of uh, emotional changes that occur in that age group that should be addressed, or at least evaluated to make sure that uh, there's a good, strong, solid base. It's very important to have that done, so I suggested for that young person to seek out that counseling to establish that as being good and solid. Nutrition would be another thing. We'll probably consider dietary evaluation sooner or later. And then an exercise routine of some sort uh, with weight control. So uh, all these things are very important. So you can see, even if you have just one disease that's presenting, it still goes back to leading a healthy life and making your lifestyle changes. So uh, it's just a matter of, uh, in this complicated arena, how to go about getting the work up and uh, how to deal with the uh, machine of referrals uh, 10 minute visits and uh, continued suffering.